Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Helen and today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up. So May was a really successful reading month for me. I ended up reading 16 books, completing all the TBR books that I had planned as well as a few extras. I also managed to complete all 12 of the Owls which means I'll be able to do the newts for the librarian career. I decided in the end I wanted to be a librarian instead of a spellmaker. However, I might choose spellmaker next year. So all in all, it was a really successful reading month and I'm really happy with it. So the first book I read was Cast Long Shadows by Sarah Reese Brennan and Cassandra Clare. This was one of the short stories in the Ghosts of the Shadow Market anthology and I read it in order to read Chain of Gold. I gave it four out of five stars. It was a fairly average short story. I really enjoyed it. I really liked getting to know the characters a bit before going into Chain of Gold and I will definitely be picking up the entire anthology at some point in the future. However, I didn't absolutely fall in love with it, so I've given it four stars. I then read Chain of Gold. This was for the History of Magic prompt, read a book with witches or wizards in it. I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really loved it. I loved discovering the new characters and the world and I really enjoyed seeing the characters from the Infernal Devices series pop up in this. I do think there's a trope in this that might get slightly annoying in books 2 and 3 if it's continued through and I feel like Sandra Clare has done it in multiple other series. However, I still am really enjoying it and I'm looking forward to book 2. I then read Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. This was for Divination and the prompt was to assign your TBR to a random number generator. Nimona is a graphic novel and I absolutely loved it. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. In it we follow Nimona who is the sidekick to an evil supervillain. However, he may not be as evil as he first appears. This was such an adorable, sweet and lovely read. I'm so glad I read it. I then read Woven in Moonlight for Astronomy, read a book predominantly at night. I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. I really liked it. However, there were some elements of it that were incredibly predictable. However, I enjoyed it a lot and I'm looking forward to seeing if there is a sequel, where the sequel goes, and if not, what other things Isabel Ibanez writes, and I look forward to reading them. The world in this was really intriguing and beautiful to read about, and the main character was really fascinating and I loved the political intrigue. I then read The Gargoyle by Andrew Davidson. This was for Ancient Runes, read a book with a heart on the cover. I ended up giving this five out of five stars. In this we follow a man who has been severely burned and has lost a lot of his humanity. He is filled with bitterness and very angry at the world and one day a strange woman comes into his hospital room and says they were lovers a long time ago. She also tells him four other stories of lovers and it was just beautiful. I loved m the majority of this. The beginning is very difficult to read because the main character is so horrible, but I absolutely adored it. And if Andrew Davidson ever writes something else, I really look forward to reading it. I then read With the Fire on High. This was for Arithmancy. Read a book opposite what you normally read. This is a contemporary and I normally read fantasy. I gave this 4.5 out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. In this, we follow Amoni who wants to be a chef. However, she is also bringing up a child and has a lot of disadvantages. She's only 17 and she takes culinary arts class at school and we follow her for this year of school. I really loved this. I really loved being inside the main character's head and all the recipes in it. It reminded me a bit of Heartburn by Nora Ephron, which I found really fascinating. And the only bit I didn't like about this was the romance, but that's just because I'm not a huge fan of contemporary romances in YA. I then read Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. This was for read a book that contains shape-shifting. This is about Kitsune, Japanese fox demons. I gave it four out of five stars and I'm really looking forward to reading the next few books in the series. In this we follow Yumeiko who is living in a monastery when one day it burns down, being burnt down by demons. She is sent off with a scroll that she must protect and on her way out of the monastery she meets Tatsumi, a mercenary who has secrets of his own. The two of them join forces to complete the mission they've been sent on and along the way meet multiple other people. By the end of this book I was so in love with the band that had been put together. I think the next few books in the series might be some of my favourites. The next book I read was not for the owls, it was instead for the reading rush. It was for the prompt read a book set somewhere you wish you could go and it was The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. I gave this four out of five stars. I ended up really liking it and I was quite surprised by that because I had not enjoyed book one. The Vanishing Stair is about Stevie who 
is a wannabe detective. She has in book one gone to Ellingham Academy, this place, this wonderful academy where a hundred years ago a murder happened. And she is determined to solve this murder. However, when she's there, another murder occurs. The Vanishing Stair followed the same plot lines and the same mysteries. However, I was really glad that we got a few mysteries in this book and the cliffhanger it ended on did not irritate me anywhere near as much as the cliffhanger of book one. I then read another book for the reading rush. This was Wakenhurst. I read this for the prompt, read a book with a house on the cover. I ended up giving this 2.5 out of five stars. I really did not enjoy it. This book is touted as a gothic thriller and in it we follow Maud, whose father appears to be incredibly strict and stifles her with his rules. However, her father is on the lookout for something that is stirring in the fen beyond them. My main issues with this were the atmosphere, the pacing and the characters. I felt like the atmosphere was too mundane for the majority of it and then it suddenly sprung into full gothic atmosphere and it expected us to be scared and creeped out and I just wasn't. The pacing was a similar problem. It was very slow for about 300 pages then so much happened in the final 100 pages I just didn't have the investment to care about it. And finally the characters. The main character in this was so unlikable I just couldn't bring myself to care about the events that were happening to her. There were some good things in this. I really enjoyed the diary entries that are scattered throughout and the opening section which was set in the 1960s as opposed to Edwardian Britain when the majority of this set was set. I think if this book had jumped far more between the past and the present it would have been far more effective also on the back it said that it spanned five centuries and it didn't it spanned one i then read a book for both the reading rush and owl's magical readathon that was a room of one's own by virginia wolf i read this entirely in one room for the reading rush and read it for potions for the owls. I gave this five out of five stars. I absolutely loved it. If you're looking to pick up some of Virginia Woolf's writing, I actually recommend starting with this one. It's possibly the easiest and most accessible book by her I've read. I listened to the audiobook, which was really fascinating because it was narrated by Natalie Dormer, who managed to get the lilting cadence of Woolf's writing really expertly done. So I really recommend that audiobook. A Room of One's Own is about a woman's place in fiction and what she needs to write fiction. It argues that in order to write fiction, a woman must have £500 a year in a room of one's own and then goes out to prove it. It looks at women in fiction through multiple lenses. Specifically, it looks at them in different times. So it begins with Shakespeare and goes all the way through to what was present day for Wolf. It's very short and quite readable and I really recommend it. I do say this is a big fan of Virginia Woolf's writing in general, so I might be a little bit biased. I then read Wicked As You Wish for Pair of Magical Creatures, read a book with an animal with a beak on the cover, and for The Reading Rush for read a book that makes you happy. I give this 3.5 out of five stars. I will be continuing with the series, but I felt that the pacing was a little bit off in places, and I enjoyed the contemporary urban fantasy setting of this far more than the much more high fantasy-esque world it goes into midway through. Saying that, I did really like the characters and I will definitely be reading the second book in the series. I then read for Charms, read a book with a white cover, The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoet by David Mitchell. The Thousand Autumns of D Jacob de Zoet is about a Dutch clerk who is sent to the port town of Nagasaki at the time when Japan did not let Westerners in. We follow Jacob's journey as he works in this town for five years, at which point he will be a fully fledged member of the shipping company, but also as he falls in love with a young woman. I ended up giving this 4.5 out of 5 stars. The first section was incredibly difficult to read, the first part, however it very quickly sped up after that and by the end of it I was in love with it and in love with all the characters. This is such a bittersweet book and it's one that I think will stay with me for a very long time, so I'm very grateful that I read it. I then read Deep Light by Frances Harding for the prompt Defense Against the Dark Arts, read a book set at the sea or on the coast. I gave this four out of five stars. In Deep Light, we follow Hark, who is the best friend of Jelt, and Jelt is constantly going off on adventures and constantly doing things. Hark, however, is much more of a daydreamer. However, one day their escapades lead to Hark being indentured to the sanctuary, the place where the priests of the old religion, the religion of the water gods, are living. While there, Jelt continues to manipulate him and forces Hark to do something with him that involves going down into the depths of the water. Down there, they find something that they assume is just a relic. 
However, it soon begins to have strange effects on heart, on Jelt and begins turning him into something that isn't quite human. I really enjoyed this. Um, I gave it four out of five stars. My problem with it was that like many books told from the perspective of a teenage boy, I just don't enjoy reading that perspective. However, the last hundred pages were so claustrophobic and gripping to read. I ended up really loving them. This book also has death rep in if you're looking for that. And in general, it is a really gripping and intense story. I find Frances Harding's writing is really good for the incredibly eerie tales she tells and I'm very grateful I read it. I then read The Midnight Light by Mary Rakoski. This was for Herbology, read a book beginning with M. I really loved this, I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars and it might be one of my new favourite YA fantasies. The Midnight Light follows Niram who is a seemingly normal young girl, however she lives in a world that essentially has a caste system. You are either half kith middling or high kith and Niram is half kith and therefore she is kept in the ward and has never seen anything beyond the walls that surround her house. One day she is arrested and each day she is forced to give a tithe of blood and while there she meets Sid, an enigmatic and mysterious stranger. This is one of my new favourite relationships in YA literature as well and just in general I ended up really loving it. I really want to read the Winnie's Champion trilogy which is by Mary Rakoski as well and I cannot wait for book two in this series. I then read The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. In this we follow a thief who has been sent back to 1920s New York to steal the item that means that magic cannot die out. It was very confusing at the beginning and it seemed to put me in a lot of situations where I didn't care enough about the characters to care about the situation. However, by the end it was so twisted and there were so many plot twists I had to enjoy it. So I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. I will be reading The Devil's Thief, which is the sequel. However, it's not that high on my priority list. Uh, the Last Magician wasn't for any prompt. It was for a book club. I'm and then reading. finally, I read The Raven King by Nora Sakovic for Muggle Studies, read of Contemporary. This is the sequel to The Foxhole Court and the second book in the All for the Game trilogy which is quickly becoming one of the most twisted YA contemporaries I've ever read. In it we follow Neil who is recruited to the Foxhole Court to play Exy, a fictional game that is essentially a mixture of ice hockey and lacrosse. While there he meets the other members of the team who all come from broken homes and he has to begin to face some of his own secrets. I gave this 4 out of 5 stars, I didn't enjoy it as much as book 1, however I think book 3 is going to be really good. I am going to leave a bit of a break before reading book three because the topics discussed in this series are incredibly dark. There are really serious trigger warnings for um, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, torture, rape, murder, child abuse. I will find an entire list and put it in the description below. But it's an incredibly t intense book and I think I need a bit of a break between each book. I cannot just binge the series. However, I am really enjoying it. I really am beginning to like the characters more and I'm looking forward to book three. So there we have the 16 books I read last month. I'm really proud of my reading progress. It's a beginning to make this month's 15 book TBR look a bit more feasible, or 16 book TBR. I will link this month's TBR videos down below if you want to go check them out. And thank you so much for watching this. All my social media will be linked down below if you want to get in contact with me. And I really hope to see you in my next video. Bye!